Hello, welcome back, and this is the last week we have for the labs, and this is lab 12. And in this lab, we will uh, do a complete burner disassembly, take it apart and put it back again together. And the purpose of this lab is for us to know all the parts that compose uh, an oil burner. So, again, first of all, we get a burner. We try to connect it using alligator clips and make sure it's working. So we connect uh, only the motor and see the function of the motor inside the casing. Take it apart into small little pieces. Then we try to put it together, set the electro gaps, and power the motor again and make sure it runs. And we can also clip on the igniters and see if there is spark. So it's a very fun lab. Uh, it should be a lot of uh, learning process and. Uh, uh, it will be very beneficial to take out the fear by taking apart a, a burner and putting it again together. There are two YouTube videos I put about uh, burners being taken apart and put back together. Make sure you watch these as well. So the part that we would like to identify is the motor, pump, the blower, the igniter, electrodes, nozzle, where they are, the oil line coming in and also the nozzle line cat cell and also the primary control so these are the main parts that we would like to identify and make sure they are in the right place so this is my burner it comes all in one piece and we'll take it apart here this is my control this is the motor here is what we call the housing this is the air band so we use this band to move this lever back and forth in order to adjust the air coming inside the, the, the housing. Inside the housing there is a fan here called a squirrel cage. And uh, this is the pump. This is my connection to the oil valve. This is my oil valve to open the oil coming to the pump once the control approved that. And this here is my nozzle line. This is called the air tube. And this is the igniter. The igniter can be either electronic or a big transformer. This is an electronic igniter, it's very lightweight. And the big bulky one is the transformer. So looking sideways inside the, the burner, you'll see that this is your electrode igniter. Or transformer which is supposed to hit the bus bar here in the electrodes these are my electrodes going all the way here in the holder and we would like to make sure that it's not touching any part of the air tube and this is my nozzle electrodes here and this is my uh, turbulator or diffuser plate and coming from here this is the cat cell this was this is the component that enables the control to see if there's light inside the tube or not. It should have good visibility of the flame or the light coming from the chamber. Uh, this is the squirrel cage fan. So it turns by the motor. And over here there's a coupling that goes all the way to the pump on the other side. Uh, to take out the squirrel cage fan, we have there's an Allen key uh, uh, screwdriver here which we loosen up and take out the squirrel cage fan. So this basically makes the components of the banner looking at it from sideways. Moving on, this is after we take it apart. Again, there's a lot of components, but looking at them, time after time, you will start to understand where they are. So we know this is the motor, comes from the side. This is the blower wheel or the squirrel cage. This is the air guide, they're also know, known as the, the air cone. I'll put that name as well here. So it's known as uh, air cone as well. And uh, here we have our solenoid valve coupling. This connect the motor end here with the pump to turn on the pump. This is here my nozzle line. This is the pump and this is the, the nozzle. Uh, valve and this is the solenoid for the nozzle that goes on top of it to open it on and off. Here is my uh, igniters and this is my air tube. 
Uh, these are flanges, so just very like flanges and gaskets. The igniter goes on top, and this is the cat cell, and this is my primary control. I know it seems a lot because they're spread out, but once you look at them and know their function, you know how they are being put together. Uh, one way to take out the, the igniters because they're very fragile and they have ceramics in them is we take them from the top. We try to loosen the lug nut over here. We loosen this lug nut and take it sideways, then pull. If it's not possible, you can take it from the front here, but again, you have to loosen the lug nut and release the nozzle from the connection. Uh, again, this is the, the gap, so we're going to set up the gap again like we learned from last uh, week. We set up the gaps and put it back, put back again, the whole assembly by itself. And again, make sure it's not touching anything uh, beside the support over here and the lug nut in there. So, we know all the motor parts. We took it apart in the other week. We know the rotor and stator, but we, this time we're not taking the motor apart. We're only taking it as a one piece. We don't take the pump apart. We just take it in one piece. And we know that inside the pump there's an impeller, casing, and a strainer sometimes. Nozzle assembly. This goes again with the ignition. So nozzle assembly has the nozzle. It has the plate. It has the igniter. Together. Oil lines, there is an oil line coming to the pump. If this is my pump, there's an oil line coming in here and it goes out to the nozzle line. So, nozzle. The ignition goes with the nozzle assembly and finally the housing, which contains the big housing that has the motor and the inducer fan and also has the air tool. Another picture of a spread out components and you see there are so many of them, but identifying the major components is the most important part. Control. This is the, again, the whole assembly here is the nozzle line with the electrodes. Uh, inducer fan or screw out cage. Motor. Flanges. Air tube. Air band taken apart in here. And this is my oil valve, solenoid oil valve pump incoming incoming uh, oil line and I think now this is the nozzle line nozzle line because it goes from the pump to the nozzle and this is the incoming uh, oil and that's basically the major components otherwise you just see screws and bolts and uh, forgot the cat cell here and this is my ignition transformer Another picture, this picture is a little bit cleaner, but again, you can see the same component again. So I put an assignment for you to try to practice to locate and look at those on uh, Blackboard so you can go and match the component with the name. Uh, be very careful. There are, there are a lot of uh, metallic sharp objects, especially for the housing. So be careful. Wear some mechanic gloves when you take it apart. Use the appropriate tool. You don't want to strip any uh, bolts. And screws and you don't want to miss any as well don't misplace them make sure you have them spread out on a table and have a container for your screws uh, use clean tools clean the tools and use clean tools when clean and clean the equipment when you put it back I mean if you're gonna take it apart might as well just uh, wipe every piece and make sure they're clean free of oil then before you put it back make sure the pump is empty of oil because if you turn on the motor with the pump connected it will spray some oil look for the Ignition spark after you're done, make sure they're sparking correctly and they're arcing to each other, not to the casing. So that will be very interesting to see. Uh, some things that you want to remember, never fire a burner in a non-ventilated place. If it's outside, if there's a big vent, that's okay. But if it's inside, you don't want to fire uh, the burner inside a basement or contained space. Call for the model before you go there. I mean, in, in real uh, practice you want to have, know what model are you dealing with and have some spare part with you so having a replacement part will enable you to see which part is bad by replacing it and see if it works or not that's a good way to 
do that. I think of safety first and what will happen next. What happens if I turn on the motor while it's connected to the pump? The pump is going to turn on and it will go to pump some oil and we'll have a lot of splash. So think about uh, what's going to happen. When you, when you take the pump, for example, before you take it, you should put some kind of container in the bottom because most likely it will leak some oil. Uh, be gentle when you take things and take pictures and take notes also. You don't want to misplace parts or take things apart that you forget how they are put back together. So take it very slow and uh, record the process or take pictures if you have to. Uh, respect the job and the take pride in your work. What does that mean? I mean putting things the right way. Uh, we see a lot of kind of uh, sketchy attitude. Okay, this is not needed. I need to wipe it out. This is how I lift it. Try to make it better than you got it and make sure nothing is rattling and make sure they also you don't have any <laughs> screws loose or something is not in place if you find some screws loose when you loose or missing when you start the job make sure you have them replaced before you put it back again together uh, there is no shame of saying I don't know if you run across a model that you don't know and you find it's a little bit challenging you can say you don't know I'm gonna get back to you and go look for information and look for the installation manual don't take it uh, a chance and taking things apart that you cannot put back together. If you don't ask questions, there are no answers. You get asked questions either from your colleagues, from your employer, or the manufacturer. Always try to use the hotline. They have a lot of information and they are very useful. Practice make perfect. If you have a model that you work on a lot, more than one time, it's good to be friends with that model. Take it apart, put it back again. Know what, what can go wrong. What could be the possibility? What could be the aftermath of putting this thing wrong? Again, the fear of the unknown, probably before this lab you'll feel, okay, I'm not going to be able to take this apart and put it back again. And once you do that and you see it work, it will take out the fear. The more you practice that, the more it, it will be more, uh, how can I say, confident in putting this together or taking things apart. And sometimes when you take things apart, you can know what's wrong with them. You can visualize it more. And also, keep documentation of what you did and what has been replaced. All right, have fun and uh, let's do this lab.